Hi guys, I'm Ghost Masala and welcome back to another World Cup guide. This time it's Poland and yes, of course last time we did Colombia, I had a look at their team and I thought, you know, why not keep with the Group 8 theme and go for what could potentially be England's opponents in the last 16, Poland. And of course I went on a school trip to Poland as well, so that's a good thing. And I just think it'd be quite interesting to compare between Poland and Colombia and I'll be doing that in the end of the video and seeing which one I think will be better out of two. So of course uh, Polish names are not the easiest to pronounce so uh, bear with me on that. I have uh, gone and looked up how to pronounce them but I've, I might have to attempt them multiple times or I might just get them wrong completely. I'm sorry if you're Polish and you take offence. I, I did try my best but as you know pronunciation is quite hard in, an, in, an, in any language. Uh, messed up Portuguese bit too in the past so who knows I might completely butcher Polish but anyway the, this formation will be uh, the Polish team that I've chosen is in a 5-3-2 formation so five five defenders three midfielders and two attackers and I'll go through the team explain why they're good what their role is and um, what they've been doing in the past few years that means they are good and first up we have Wojciech Szczęsny Ooh, nailed it <laughs> Uh, and he's a goalkeeper and you've probably heard of him from his time at Arsenal but he's at Juventus now and uh, if you remember uh, that uh, infamous game where uh, Buffon uh, got sent off Szczesny reverted to my old ways Szczesny Szczesny I don't know uh, um, actually got subbed on for Buffon at the end of that game Unfortunately, he didn't save the penalty, but he is back up at the moment. But of course, you don't move to Juventus without some good performances at your previous club. And he joined for Juventus for 12 million in the summer. And he, uh, Buffon is retiring this year, so he could well become the starting goalkeeper for Juventus. I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. And before that, he had 14 clean sheets, and he's only 27, which is quite young for the for a goalkeeper. He will be 28 by the time the World Cup comes around. But of course, he looks much better than his days at Arsenal, although he can be a bit inconsistent. But I think he's a good goalkeeper, and this is not what the Polish team lacks. And you'll see what I'm saying in a bit. Especially with this next guy, who is the weakest guy in the team, Maciej Rebus. And uh, yes, he is probably the weak link in this team, but I went for five at the back, and you'll see why later, because I wanted to put two particular players in, as well as the centre-backs. And um, this guy is plays for Lokomotiv Moscow in Russia. He will be 28 by the time the World Cup comes 28 yeah 28 by the time the world cup comes around and unfortunately he has not had a good season at all he hasn't played that many matches he did win the french super cup came second because he played for leon as you can see in his card he's got the leon kit on and moved to locomotive for 1.5 million but he's not had a great season but he is probably the best polish left back out there but unfortunately he's not actually that good and moving on we have the next player, Mikhail Pazdan, uh, who plays at centre back for a Polish team, uh, Legia Warsaw, Warsaw. So mispronounced that, but well. And uh, he will be 30, 30 by the time the World Cup comes around. And uh, he is probably the best centre back in the Polish league, I would say. Won the extra class uh, last year with Legia Warsaw, and uh, he was uh, shows his. This shows his international pedigree. In Euro 2016, he got Man of the Match versus Germany, which helped Poland get through to the last 16 of the tournament and got that helped them to their quarter-final run, where they eventually went out to Portugal, which was quite a good run, I thought. But it didn't go all the way. But yeah, he is a solid centre-back, and uh, unfortunately there's not too much data on the Polish league, which turned out to be a big problem for the centre-mid spots. But I would say he is definitely a good player and a decent centre back to rely on. But not quite as good as the two centre backs we have. Well, I mean, ah, you'll see. Uh, next up, we have Kamil Glick. No, no problems with pronounce, pronouncing pronouncing that one. Uh, plays centre back for Monaco in France, of course. Monaco won League Un last year, and he was in their team. He was in the League Un team of the year in that in 1617. Not had. 
such a good season this season, but he is he did has he is a goal scoring centre back. He he'll be good up front, um, not up front, uh, up up for corners for Poland, of course. And he's 30 years old, but he's definitely a good centre back. This is an aging defence, I would say. Uh, so next Euros. Poland could well be struggling but at this tournament they've got a solid defence and Glick is going to be tough to get past. Poland don't really have problems in defence hence why I've put five players in defence for them uh, because they don't have problems there and next up we have a slightly strange choice but it's where he's been playing in the national team we have hold on Ukash Piszczek there we go at centre back in this team and um he normally plays at right back for his club Dortmund. Uh, he's probably the best right back in the Bundesliga, I would say. I'm forgetting someone. Oh, Kimmich. Mm. Arguably, arguably the best centre back in the Bundesliga. And he is not centre back, right back in the Bundesliga. And he is a very good player. And it shows how just how well his team his team does with him in it. Uh, he was in the Bundesliga Team of the Year twice in a row. And. Uh, uh, this might be an old stat, but up all the matches that he played in, he'd only lost uh, all the matches that he played in so far this season. Uh, he'd only lost once when he was in the team, and that was against Bayern, which just shows how valuable he is to the Dortmund setup. And yes, he is getting on a bit. He'll be 33 by the time the World Cup comes around, but he'll. Well, oh yeah, just about 33 by the time the World Cup comes around, but which is why I've chosen to play him at centre back because he's lacking the pace. That um, at right back, I reckon he'll probably switch to centre back in the World Cup and probably for club if he stays at Dortmund. Oh, I think he's still contracted. If he's yeah, I reckon he'll switch to centre back. But he is a very solid defensively and attacking, one of the best players in the team. And next up we have a uh, youngish right back, uh, the youngest player in the defence by a long way. Bartosz Bereshinski, that was good, <laughs> who is a right back and he is playing at right back because he's a bit younger, a bit faster, a bit less defensive as he he's, doesn't play well in defence, he's more of an more of a attacking left back and he'll be 20, if they get to, the, he'll be 25 at the start of the World Cup. Plays for Sampdoria in Italy and joined them for two million at uh, the end of the last season, and he has started most games this season. Uh, he he's just been a consistent like that basically, and uh, hopefully he, he will. If he has a good World Cup, he could well pick up a move to a bigger club. But he hasn't been outstanding for Sampdoria so far. He's been kind of like a average player, but he's definitely a good player. He's definitely a good enough player to play in this Poland setup, and he I don't think he will let the national team down particularly. Um, and yeah, so we move on to the centre mid spots now, three centre mids. And uh, we have the most up and coming player in the Polish team. It's quite an old team, I would say. But, uh, but Piotr Zielinski is definitely one of the better players in this team. He plays it at, he's a midfielder and he plays for Napoli. And they've had an insane title charge this Sorry, I was just wondering. Yeah, it is Napoli who've had an insane title charge this season, and he's played a part. He hasn't started that many games, but when he comes on as sub, he has a great. Um, he, he plays really well. He'll be 24 by the time of the World Cup, but yeah, as I said, he gets an average of a seven rating per game on the website that I use, which is very good, especially if you're coming on a sub at the time. And he's had a price tag set at 57 million interest from Liverpool, Barcelona and that could just go up if he has a good World Cup and of course he's got a chance of winning Serie A, it's looking like a good chance now after they beat Juventus um, and he's played a big part in many of their last games but of course if you're watching this later on I may have just um, got the title race completely wrong there but uh, yeah unfortunately he's the strongest part of this midfield as we move on to a slightly a player who's not had the best of seasons Gishegos, Gishegos Kratowiak, sorry that was not very good but he plays a, as a defensive midfielder for West Bromwich Albion who are almost certainly relegated so yeah you could just see why this is not going to be a good, why this has not been a good season for Kratowiak and why I hesitated to pick him in the team but he is in there 
due to a lack of centre defensive mids and you'll see what I mean in a bit but yeah he's in there and just because of his past seasons he's had great past seasons he's not performed well for West Brom and he'll be 28 by 28 yeah 28 by the time the tournament comes around which is still good he's still got time to you know have a couple of good seasons in the future and he uh, just a couple of seasons ago he was in the Europa League team of the season uh, which is which was like uh, out of the whole Europa League for Sevilla so it just shows how he was a good player in the past and I think his experience will uh, his experience of big tournaments like the Europa League will help the rest of this team but I mean they all have quite a lot of experience of big competitions but uh, he's played against a lot of different players and he did win the Coupe de France in 2016-17 but he didn't pay, uh, pay, play a big part in that PSG team due to disagreements with the manager I think he hasn't shown his full potential this season at West Brom I think he will get better in the future but um, we'll have to wait and see in previous seasons and that's not going to help for his World Cup performance anyway but he will get in the team due to the lack of centre mids and we have the final centre mid here uh, Christoph Mantwinski, that is how you pronounce his name, I looked it up, apart from the first name, I absolutely messed that up, but the second name, that is how you pronounce him, uh, pronounce Mantwinski's name, and he's a centre mid for Legia Warsaw, uh, uh, yeah, of course, he is, um, he'll be 31 by the time of the World Cup, uh, which is fine, which is, yeah, he's probably, he has 30 caps for Poland, so even though he's played in the Polish League for most of his career, apart from the Chinese League for a bit, so it shows that he's one of the best players in the Polish League if he's had to, if he's managed to have so many cups for Poland, and uh, Legia Warsaw came second in the Super Cup in 16-17, so it's, he's a, he's a good player, he's a consistent centre mid, maybe even better than Krachowiak, and I think he'll play, um, I, yeah, it's it's a tough one to decide for the midfielders, but I think he's good. I think Martinski is a good enough player to get in this team. Don't know much about him, but uh, he, he seems consistent. And we move on to the attackers, which is a, a quite strong part of the team, but outside of these two, there's not much. And I have, for the, but apart from a big competition between two of them, and I have gone for Ukash Teodorczyk, uh, at striker instead of Milik, uh, don't know how to pronounce his first name, so we'll stick with Milik. Might be even pronounced that. <laughs> he plays at striker for Anderlecht, uh, Belgium, and uh, he was uh, he will be 27 by the time of the World Cup. And uh, he hasn't had the best of season this season, but last season he won the Pro League and was the top scorer. Which just shows how clinical he can be and uh, I think it would be a massive mistake not to take him especially as Milik has only played not to take it who I mean he'll be taken into he'll be taken to the World Cup shortly but um, not to start him uh, because uh, the other striker option Milik uh, has played nine games this season so it wouldn't be a good idea not to take him and I wouldn't be surprised if he has a good World Cup he'll probably get a move to a bigger club maybe in France or Italy or something like that. He has had a bad start to the season but uh, that has picked up with a transfer of international star Ryota Morioka and he has started scoring again towards the latter half of the season. He's now on 12 goals in about 27 games which is, uh, I mean it's not the best for a striker but it's not terrible either. And you've got to remember that the Belgian league doesn't have that many games in it. And his link-up play with Morioka is probably good. I don't really know. But uh, where, all I see is a correlation. Morioka arrives. Teodorczyk starts scoring goals. So hopefully Zielinski will be able to link up with him uh, by, uh, at the World Cup instead of Morioka. Because they're quite similar in terms of play, style of play. And finally we have the man you've all been waiting for. Robert Lewandowski. Plays at striker for Bayern Munich and I don't really need to say much about this guy he'll be uh, t uh, 29 by the time the World Cup comes around he and I mean he's Lewandowski as I've written here he's never he's Lewandowski nothing else needed that really is all I can say to be honest top scorer in, in, in UEFA qualifying for the World Cup uh, in the UEFA section which is I mean that's out of all the European teams and he scored the most goals which is just phenomenal I don't quote me on this, but I think 
he might no he is Poland's top scorer of all time I want to say that but I mean just go YouTube uh, just google him five goals in uh, 10 minutes he scored a few years ago uh, he's been top scorer for many seasons he's just an incredible player I mean uh, Lewandowski is by miles yep I mean if he has a good World Cup he could potentially be scoring seven or eight goals uh, and yeah so that's it and um, that's it everyone and uh, I hope you've enjoyed watching and um, as for the comparison between Poland and Colombia I believe that Colombia do have a slightly better team overall but Poland could they seem to gel well as a national team and they could contend Zielinski if he has a good he could have a good World Cup and he could jump into the spotlight of the world game and right uh, like Camus Rodriguez a few years ago uh, I reckon he could be the deciding factor in whether this Poland team managed to link up and win group H and uh, I reckon they have an alright chance of winning group H but yeah I'll be doing Japan next time another team in group H who could potentially get through because it seems very even in that group right such an exciting group I'll be trying to watch all the matches of that group that I can <laughs> by the time the World Cup comes around and yeah I guess I'll see you next time because the video has been going on for a long time now and I've been talking for ages so yeah I'll see you then <laughs>